fantasy hockey picks and bets on the Mayo Media Network. This one is for January 5th. Two game slate for this Wednesday. Not a ton of action on the ice. There usually isn't a lot of games on a Wednesday. And then, of course, with all the COVID scenarios, more games get canceled. I think there was originally three on the slate. We're down to two, but we got a couple good ones. Tons of good storylines. Going to take a bit of a different approach for this video. Usually I like to run through the games pretty quickly for the bigger slates. Obviously with only two games, not as much to get to. I can go over things with a little bit more, a little bit more time. And then at the end, I will go over a few futures bets that I am interested in for the rest of the season for the Stanley Cup. Just because I can't fill 15 minutes on these two games, at least not with useful information. I could obviously talk about these games for 25, 30 minutes, but... You're already probably planning on tuning out after 10, so no reason to make it any worse than it has to be. First game of the night here. The Edmonton Oilers are in Toronto. Massive, massive storylines in this game. First, we'll get to the betting odds. This is what I'm seeing on DraftKings Sportsbook the day before as I record this. The Edmonton Oilers are plus 170. The Toronto Maple Leafs are minus 200, and here is why Edmonton Oilers captain Connor McDavid undoubtedly the best player in the world in the National Hockey League. He's out with COVID. Now, here's the part that kind of is sitting a little weird with me. So you listen to their press conferences beforehand, the coach is talking after practice. This is how the Oilers are spinning it. The Oilers are saying Connor McDavid was held out of practice today for precautionary reasons. I mean, that's just not true. Connor McDavid was held out of practice today because he tested positive for COVID-19. He's not allowed to come on the ice. That's not a precautionary reason. That's not he had the sniffles and he didn't play. He tested positive so he can't play. Maybe he'll test negative tomorrow. Maybe it was an error. I doubt it. But Connor McDavid, who actually, before the Rangers game, which they lost 4-1 to the other night with McDavid in the lineup, before that game, McDavid didn't practice that day either. So-called maintenance day. A couple days later, turns out he's got the coronavirus. Shocker there. Oilers built an excuse to lose the next couple games. Toronto's going to kick the living shit out of Edmonton in this one. They were going to beat them handily with McDavid in the lineup. Without him, it's not even going to be close. Now, Toronto, a bit of a COVID scare themselves. Austin Matthews mentioned a bit before, maybe McDavid's is a false positive. The only reason I said that is because Austin Matthews, Toronto Maple Leafs, he tested positive a couple days ago. The next day, test negative. I assume because of that, he is going to be in the lineup for this game. Not confirmed yet. Whether or not Austin Matthews is in the lineup or not, the Oilers are going to, or the, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to win this hockey game. But if Matthews is in, then obviously the line is going to be heavily in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Minus 200 right now. Edmonton's not winning any games with Connor McDavid, so they're not going to win any games without him. Most people... Probably see this as a disappointment, obviously, as I've gone on many times from Calgary, Calgary Flames fan. I love seeing the Oilers without Connor McDavid. The team is a wreck defensively, horrible in the defensive zone. The only thing that they have going for them is that their transition game with McDavid and or dry settle on the ice is elite. They can be hemmed in their own zone for two, three minutes. One quick odd man rush the other way and they've scored. Lots of games like that. They get dominated. They end up winning the game because they have the high-end offensive talent without McDavid. Dreisaitl can only play about 25 minutes, maybe less, and he's kind of a wreck defensively when he's on the ice by himself as well. So Edmonton's going to give up a ton of shots, a ton of chances. Their goaltending's been horrible. Coach is mad about the goaltending because he let in a couple softies last night. I just, I don't have anything good to say about the Edmonton Oilers without Connor McDavid, and I'm going to be honest, I love that. I love that the Edmonton Oilers are struggling right now. I mean, we should see ton of goal, tons of goals for Toronto in this one. The over-under is 6.5. It's minus 115 right now. Against Ottawa, I also took the over-6 against Ottawa when Toronto played a few nights ago. It was 6.0. Toronto scored six goals to make it a push, but they didn't give up any, so it didn't even hit the over. So I am concerned that Edmonton won't be able to generate any offense here, so I'm staying away from the over-under in this game. I'm ecstatic to see what the Edmonton Oilers look like without Connor McDavid. He is... Easily the MVP of the league, easily the player that means the most to his team. So without McDavid, not a lot, not a lot of promise for this Edmonton Oilers offense. They're going to get shredded defensively. I'm going to talk DraftKings. If Matthews plays, Matthews, Bunting, Marner are going to play a ton. If Matthews doesn't play, as they practiced the day before, it was Tavares with Marner and Bunting. Either way, those two wingers are going to play with an elite level centerman. They're going to get lots of power play time. 
Toronto offense is going to be wildly popular, as they should be on the Oilers' side. Dreisaitl obviously going to play a ton. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is going to have to play a ton. Jesse Poljujarvi is going to have to play a ton. These guys are going to have to step up. But without being carried by Connor McDavid, it's going to be interesting to see if they can even generate anything offensively. Big, big game for Leon Dreisaitl to show that he is not simply benefiting from playing with McDavid as it appears that he may be. Next game of the night, with all those injuries, mainly to McDavid, this actually becomes the marquee game in my opinion. Two teams that are playing really, really well right now, the St. Louis Blues and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Plus 110 for the Blues right now, minus 130 for the Penguins. I'm all over the St. Louis Blues. If you follow my premium picks, which you can find on CecilPeters.com, you will know. I love to bet on the St. Louis Blues. They're one of my current favorite teams right now to make money on. They're deep, they're big, they're fast, they're physical. Just a really tough team to beat. They're pretty much fully healthy right now. The only question for me is their goaltending can be a little bit inconsistent, but when it's on, it is top notch. So the St. Louis Blues at plus money, I will take them here. Pittsburgh's a formidable opponent though. Pittsburgh has Tristan Jerry back in net. He missed their last game. He was on the COVID list. He's back. He's had an exceptional year playing amazing hockey. Pittsburgh also is about as healthy as they've been all year. They're still waiting on Evgeny Malkin to be back, but he is practicing fully, so I expect him to be back in the next week or so. Not for this game, so I can't really talk too much on him, but that is going to be a big step for this team. Last game they played, Evan Rodriguez, who's had a phenomenal season, had a hat-trick. He's been up and down the lineup all year long. Played with Crosby for a bit when Gunsel and Rust were out. Did well there. Played on the fourth line, back when everybody was healthy. Did well there. Well, now he's on the second line. Because Crosby, Gensel, and Rust are all fully healthy. They're all playing together on the first line. He's on the second line. No Jeff Carter. No Evgeny Malkin. The guy gets a hat trick. Brian Rust on the first line got a hat trick as well. They beat the Sharks. I think it was 8 5. Massive, massive night for the Penguins goal scorers. And they're just dominating play. Scoring a ton of goals, not allowing a ton. Even last game, they did give up five goals. That was more of a goaltending issue. They were up big and they really let the they really let the San Jose Sharks back into the hockey game. But their defense overall has been fantastic. Their goaltending has been fantastic, and they're getting the scoring right now as well. The big thing with the Blues for me right now is their scoring depth up front. Jordan Cairo has been on a tear. He just had a great game in a big-time spot in the Winter Classic against Minnesota. Four-point night for Cairo. Four-point period, actually, in the second. That was right after a three-point game. I think it was against Edmonton that he had that performance. So Cairo has been playing really well. He's playing on a line with Robert Thomas and Vladimir Tarasenko right now. Great chemistry there. That's not even the first line on this hockey team. Brandon Saad is on the wing. Ryan O'Reilly in the middle. David Perron on the other side. That's the top line right now. They get more minutes, less offensive opportunities. They're more of the shutdown line as well. So at home, they get a ton of minutes on the road here. Probably a little less defensive work for them. So I expect them to have a big night. Brayden Shen's coming back. He'll be on the third line, I assume, unless they jumble the lines back up. But the way the chemistry is on those first two lines... I assume they're going to put Shen on the third line. Pavel Buchnevich, who has probably been the most consistent St. Louis Blue all year long. He's going to be playing there as well. Maybe Oscar Sundqvist, maybe Ivan Barbashev. they got a ton of options to go with them. Their top three forward lines are unmatched around the National Hockey League. Love the depth of this team. Kairou's the hot hand right now, so you got to ride. Jordan Kairou, Robert Thomas, Vladimir Tarasenko. Obviously going to be super popular. Obviously going to be decently expensive, but they are playing really well. It is a tough matchup, but they are scoring against anybody and everybody right now. Hard to turn away from them. The St. Louis Blues, probably my Stanley Cup favorite right now. Maybe not the fav maybe not the team most likely to win it, but according to the current betting odds, the St. Louis Blues are who I would take to win the Stanley Cup right now. They're currently 25 to 1. I just think you meet this team in a Stanley Cup final series, any Stanley Cup playoff series, seven games. Good luck taking four out of seven against the St. Louis Blues. The only way you're doing it is if you get in Jordan Bennington's head. The guy's kind of a snap show. He freaks out, starts trying to get in fights, tossing his stick around. If you can get in his head, maybe you can beat them. But for the most part, their defense is deep. They don't have that top elite high-end number one guy, but they got a ton of good options. Like I said, their forward depth is unmatched. They're big, they're fast, they're physical. Everything that you want in a team in a seven-game series in a four series run to the Stanley Cup Finals. The St. Louis Blues have it for me. I mean, some of the teams that are ahead of them in the in order here, the Minnesota Wild, absolute train wreck defensively right now. They're 17 to one. That's a horrible bet, in my opinion. Florida Panthers, that's the kind of team that I think St. Louis is similar to. They're deep, they're big, they're physical. 
they're eight to one. St. Louis, 25 to one. St. Louis probably has an easier path to the Stanley Cup Finals than the Florida Panthers as well. So St. Louis, a much better bet in my opinion. If you wanna go deeper down, I do like the Dallas Stars as well. I think at their best, they are a Stanley Cup contender. They're just not always at their best. They're much more inconsistent. So St. Louis is where I currently lean. They're my Stanley Cup pick at the moment, 25 to one St. Louis Blues. So for tonight, we have the St. Louis Blues over the Pittsburgh Penguins. By the time you're listening to this, the line might have moved a ton on the Toronto game, but I am going to take the Toronto Maple Leafs in regulation to beat the Edmonton Oilers. Maybe take a team total on the Toronto Maple Leafs over four and a half or over three and a half goals just for them alone. Shot props, Vladimir Tarasenko is shooting a ton right now. He's been listed at over three and a half for the last few games, close to plus money there. He's been hitting it. Tarasenko's the guy I'm going to for the shot props. You can find Evan Rodriguez of the Penguins. Not everywhere offers him. He's not a huge name yet, but he's been shooting the puck a ton. Brian Rust, guys like that. Shooting the puck a ton, getting lots of opportunities. That's what it's all about. Once again, small two-game slate. Tried to make this video as long and as interesting as possible. If you could like, rate, review the video wherever you are listening or watching. If you are on YouTube, please leave a comment below with your thoughts on how the Oilers are going to do without Connor McDavid. That would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. That is my time for the week. DJ and Jake will take you through the rest of the week, and I will be back here next Tuesday with fantasy hockey picks and bets. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.